Welcome to background removal in OBS. In this video, we'll see how to set up the plugin, add it to a video source, adjust the parameters to improve results, use the background blur option, change CPU settings, and utilize the GPU in systems that support it. So let's get started. To get started, make sure you have OBS version 28 and above and I've added a video source you want to apply the background removal filter to. Next, navigate to the effect filter section of your video's source properties and hit the plus button to add a new filter. You will not see the filter in the audio video filter section. Scroll down and select the background removal option. If this option is not available to you, you will need to install this plugin first. The installers for several operating systems are available for download in the link in the video description. After selecting the filter, you may use the right panel to set its properties. Here you can select different background detection models such as media pipe or robust video matting. You can try other models and find what gives the best results depending on your video source and lighting conditions. Note that media pipe, the default, is usually the most efficient and works well in most situations. After selecting the detection model, you can adjust different parameters to improve the removal results. The first and most important parameter is enable threshold. When thresholding is enabled, we process the output of the neural network to make the detection possibly nicer. If you disable thresholding, you will save on CPU resources. So try that first and see if the removal effect is decent. Increasing the threshold value will allow more of the background to be included in the removal process while decreasing it will return more of the foreground. Another important parameter is the feather option, which blurs the edges of the removed area to reduce any hard borders. The smooth parameter will smooth the contour of the foreground from the jagged edges and produce a more rounded segmentation effect. You can also try the contour size parameter, which will attempt to only keep the biggest blobs of the foreground in the mask. Next is the background blur option. This will blur the area that is being removed, unlike the default mode where the background is replaced with a transparent color and will show what's behind the video. By default, this option is turned off, but if you enable it, you can adjust the blur amount parameter to determine the degree of blurring. Finally, if you're experiencing performance issues with the background removal, you can adjust the CPU thread count. Note that the more threads you use, the more processing power will be devoted to the removal and the faster it will be, but the impact on your computer will be higher. Watch the frames per second FPS reading on OBS. If it drops below 30, you may want to add more threads. There is a limit where adding more threads does not make it faster and increase FPS. We found that using just one or two CPU threads on a reasonably new machine will use less than 10% of the CPU. Use your operating system's resource manager to find out for real what is the impact of the filter on the CPU. If you set the CPU threads to zero, then the Onyx runtime backend will choose automatically the number of threads, but in most cases it will default using all the available cores, so watch out for that. Remember that disabling thresholding will free up some CPU cycles and you can squeeze out a few more percent that way. Additionally, if you have a GPU, you can enable it for background removal. Windows system can use DirectML and Linux can utilize TensorRT from CUDA. Mac OS X can use CoreML. Using the GPU will reduce the CPU usage by a whole lot, but it may trigger more work for your GPU. So be mindful of that when recording or streaming an application that uses a GPU like a game. That's it for this instructional video. By now, you should be familiar with setting up the plugin on a video source, choosing different detection models, adjusting filter parameters, and controlling the CPU thread count and using the GPU when applicable.
Keep experimenting with different settings and parameters to find the best ones for your video source. Thanks for watching.